All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Review Mod Project. I'm Psycho again with you today, and in this one, we're going to go for one of my favorite series. Um, I think the first game I've played in the series, when it came out, and even recorded it as the first one of the series because of the pretty much Game Boy Advance thingy. So, the game, as you can see, is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, um, an action-adventure game developed and published by Nintendo back in 1991. Um, it was released in 1991 in Japan and in 1992 in North America and Europe, I think, um, and is, is and has been reviewed as one of the better um, Zelda games out there. Um, it is an old Game Boy Advance exclusive game, pretty much, so to play it you're going to need an emulator or a Game Boy Advance with a cartridge, which today are kind of hard to get by, but it is, um, it is possible to get them somehow. Um, so yeah, let's just dive into everything. As far as the story goes, it's pretty much a classic Legend of Zelda type of game. Princess Zelda gets kidnapped, and you, as the main character, Link, have to save her. But how do you do this in this game? Well, they have featured a giant open world to explore. And it is amazing. With all the enemies and gimmicks that you need to, what shall we, shall we say, overcome, to actually get to the end and save Princess Zelda from Aghanim, um, it kind of takes you a while to pretty much get there. So the gameplay itself is quite long, but it is always fun. Because of um, the multiple, how should we call it, gadgets um, and tools that you get along the way, you're going to have a fun time exploring different areas of the, well, of the open world as well as the dungeons. Um, there is a lot to explore, and with every new tool comes come new possibilities and new routes to take, which lead to some lead to secrets, some lead to new dungeons, and pretty much getting to explore the world and saving the princess. Uh, there are a lot of collectibles in the world of Hyrule, which you can pick up with just by I don't know looking around you and. Some are pretty easily hidden, some are well hidden, so um, if you want to, there are multiple guides on the internet that show you where everything is and how to get to everything. Um, or you can just watch the video. I've pretty much covered um, everything in my playthrough, so as far as that goes, there is a lot of stuff to find. Um, from rupees that are the currency throughout the game to new new tools that you can use that aren't um, that aren't necessary to complete the game but kind of help you out two heart containers bomb containers everything as I said there is a lot of tools <coughs> throughout the game that you can use to pretty much help you progress like the boomerang the bombs the arrows some are necessary to have and are placed in your path um, just because you're gonna need them or they are going to prove super useful for the boss in the dungeon that you are going to be facing. Um, there are a couple of dungeons throughout the overworld, overworld which you need to complete to pretty much get the heart containers and get to the, to the final boss and in the end uh, save Zelda from, from Aghanim. Um, so yeah, as far as everything goes, the bosses themselves are pretty cool actually. They're pretty much gimmick bosses, most of them, um, just because you can use the tools that you get in the in the dungeon to get through it. The tool that you get, in each dungeon you get one tool and there's one, one final boss. And every final boss is pretty much a gimmick to the tool that you get. So if you get bombs you have to defeat him with bombs, if you get a hammer you have to hammered, his head flat, stuff like that. Which pretty much kind of gives you a feeling for what you need to do without telling you straight up, do this. Um, so you definitely have to do something to kind of get your brain moving and figure out by yourself how to pretty much um, 
get through all of the dungeons and defeat all of the enemies. The minor enemies aren't that difficult. Some of them can be pretty annoying from time to time, but um, but you're gonna have to either deal with them or cope with getting damaged somehow and um, find yourself heart containers, hearts under pots, just break everything to to get stuff or pretty much stock up on fairies in jars that heal you up for all of your all of your HP. Um, so yeah. All in all, the game is amazing. It's a great take on a classical RPG from, well, adventure game, not really much of an RPG since they don't give you roles, but uh, it's an amazing adventure game that was released a long time ago and is still popular. Um, so I'm going to recommend this game to all of you Nintendo fans, all of you Zelda fans, and even just adventure game fans. It's a great game which gets you thinking and pretty much gives you the opportunity to explore the world a lot, find secrets, get new stuff. Do, do you. Just do you and get, get to the princess. Save her. Um, the game also features a multiplayer mode, which I haven't tested out yet, sadly, but I'd love to sometime um, if I get the chance. Um, since it came with the Four Swords expan expansion, kind of, um, which gives the player a possibility to connect with three other players and play together and just go through the world. I have no idea what the story or anything there is, so I can't tell you even if I wanted to. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much all from my side for this one. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment on the videos, and join me in the next one.